Matt Aguilar here from comicbook.com. And today I have the esteemed pleasure of speaking to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers star, David Yost. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm pumped. I'm pumped for this. This is, uh, it's always awesome. As you can see in my background, it's always awesome to talk Power Rangers. Uh, it's, it's a favorite franchise of mine. And uh, last year, 2023 was a, was a great year uh for for ranger fandom uh we got once and always we got cosmic fury uh lots of other things of course happening uh around the edges as well um you know for for you you were in both of those uh projects uh i guess for starting for cosmic fury uh what was the experience like uh working with the cast of of dino fury moving into cosmic um putting together that 30th anniversary season uh, for me, it was a lot of fun. The kids, as I like to call them, uh, they were so <laughs> nice, so welcoming. Obviously, they had two seasons uh, working together, so they had their camaraderie down. And they're all they're all such humble and uh, great people. Uh, it's pretty pretty amazing to see a cast work like that. So that was that was really nice to walk into a situation like that, and that they just have a lot of respect for each other, and they just welcomed me uh, right out of the gate. And uh, we're very generous, and I had a lot of fun getting to work with them. Well, it's one of those things, too. We rarely ever get to see the same cast return multiple right. times. And it really hasn't been since Mighty Morphin that we've had the chance to really see different iterations of the same characters. Uh, you know, And also, too, there was so many elements from Mighty Morphin brought in, right? You, all the Zed stuff, all the Zordon stuff, just even the core principles and and interactions with characters like billy <laughs> so uh what did you think of a lot of those mmpr elements kind of coming into this very new very modern take on rangers i thought it was a uh, kind of i thought it was cool actually uh you know to to do this 30 year progression and here we are on the 30th uh, season and to to bring some of the MMPR uh, elements is pretty uh, nostalgic, obviously, for a lot of people. I think it brought a lot of more. I thought it brought more people into watching Cosmic Fury, which I thought was great. Uh, I can't believe how many people from MMPR the fans, you know, that from MMPR, like I, I watched Cosmic Fury because you're in it and it was such a great season. Uh, you know, <laughs> so I, thought, I thought that was great. So um, but yeah, to bring lord zed in and keep the elements of zordon you know in the ethers there uh you know it always leaves the power ranger world open up to so many different possibilities yeah and people love billy you know <laughs> people love billy uh it's it's awesome he's he's one of the characters that you know people have actually seen evolve and grow so much uh and really if you look at the whole show i mean i think He's the character that has grown the most and changed the most over time. He's still he's still Billy and and personality and things, but you know you've never really seen so many other Rangers kind of go from being a Ranger to being an ally to then being a mentor to then being kind of all of the above. And so Billy, it's cool to see Billy do that, and it, it was great to see it tied in with the thirtieth uh, as well. Um, and, and speaking of Zordon. Yes. It was a it was a nice nod uh, to see that, you know, that Zato moment of having Zordon, you know, speak, speak through him and, and kind of leave that thread out there uh, just a little bit of like, hey, we could pick up on that. What did you think of that moment? And also, you know, the possibility of leaving that out there just in case maybe down the line someone picks that up and runs with it. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was a, a great story element, obviously, and uh, for my character as well, because at the very end of Cosmic Fury, we don't, we see it, but, uh, you know, Billy's kind of like left on the stage when everybody else is celebrating, he's kind of off in the wings, and he's just like so stuck on Zordon, like, uh, if, <laughs> if, if, wait, you know, it was like that moment where, uh, I can't remember what character, I came up, I think it was a uh, Hunter's character came up and said something. And I was like, wait, that's Zordon would only say that. So, uh, you know, it was like, that means Zordon's alive. So uh, that was really great for my character because it just really continues to put him in that situation of, I got to find him. Uh, I know he's out there. And then tying it in with Zato uh, was really such an awesome thing in the way that they uh, ended the whole season with Zato on the screen was just uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, being up, you were in a unique position. You were in, in both projects once and always uh, and Cosmic Fury, not back to back 
time wise, but back to back project wise, I know there was some time in between those, or I believe there was. Um, what was the difference or the biggest difference for you in as far as those experiences? Because I know one, obviously, you're, you know, reuniting with uh, a lot of uh, fellow original castmates, but then there was also new, new cast additions in that too. What were the biggest differences between those two projects? I mean, uh, I feel like, hopefully I don't get in trouble for saying this, uh, I feel like with Once and Always, it just felt so much more elevated and so much more like we were almost shooting a movie, you know? And so uh, I just thought it was a little bit uh, grander in some ways. And then, uh, so it was a lot of fun. Obviously it was great for me to get to work with Walter Jones again. We started the franchise 30 years ago and uh, just to get to be on set with him again, he's, you know, he's wild. He's uh, always got so much energy. <laughs> he's always like, he's always got the party started. So it was great to work with him again. I had so much fun. And, uh, you know, it was a bittersweet moment for the two of us, uh, again, because we started the the franchise together. But I know on the final, on Walter's final day of filming Once and Always, it was, it was such an emotional day for him. And I just thought, wow, that's, that's kind of a, such a great thing to be a part of because uh, I didn't realize how much it meant to him. And um, so I, I was glad that I got to share that with him uh, and it was so heartfelt. And then, um, you know, Cosmic Fury, again, it, you know, it's, it's a different pace because you're filming 10 episodes. And so right. it's a little bit more all over the place because the way that you shoot, you know, you're on one set and you're kind of trying to shoot as much as possible on that set for those 10 episodes. So the pace was a little bit different than what we had on Once and Always. Once and Always, again, felt like a movie. So it was a little, it was a fast pace, but slowed down and you could follow the story. You know, you knew the story a little bit better. With 10 episodes, you kind of have to go back and forth and try to figure out, okay, I said this over here. So this means this here. Uh, so it's a little bit more of a juggling act, but um, it was uh, a lot of fun. That's all I can truly say. Well, and do you, you know, right now we're kind of in a a little bit of a waiting period, a little bit of limbo as, you know, we we hear there's a lot of things in development and but, you know, obviously um, between pandemic and so many other things, uh, it just feels like we don't have any real details for you, though, being in a in a series and then being in kind of a one off special film, mm -hmm. you know, which do you prefer one over the other? Would you like to do more of those once and always kind of encapsulated stories in, in the future if if that's kind of a route they decide to go? I mean, I would, I'm never a no, so I'm totally open to it. Uh, it was, you know, a great experience, but I mean, I think just coming from my background of television, I prefer to be in a series. I like the long, uh, the longevity of a character. Uh, obviously, as you started off in this interview, you know, for me to get to play Billy and take Billy from the quintessential nerd who didn't have a lot of confidence and really grow him over my initial time uh, on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Alien Rangers, into Zeo, uh, and you really got to see him evolve. So, you know, as an actor, I like to do that, uh, you know, to take my character on uh, more of a journey. So, you know, when you're doing Once and Always, it's, it is a very small little chunk of time. Uh, that we get to see the characters. And so, you know, I uh, I enjoyed it uh, and I would do it again. But uh, if I had my choice, it would be uh, for a series. Just that longer term storytelling. Um, and, you know, for me, I it's one of those weird things. I'm always like, uh, it always takes a minute for like my wife to convince me to like watch a movie. Like she's very much movies and I'm TV and <laughs> You know, she's always like, oh, come watch this. And I'm like, oh, it's like two and a half hours. But then I sit there for three and a half, right? Watching four episodes of a show. So I, I don't know. It's, it's always just seems different in my mind, but uh, I tend to prefer that longer term as well. Um, there was a little bit of, go, go ahead. I was just going to say, I feel like now with the way that streamers are, uh, you know, they get six, eight, 10 episodes. So it feels like a very long, drawn out movie, you know? <laughs> and so yeah. I think I, I, I kind of enjoy that aspect of it uh, as well, because they, they draw it out. There was a little bit of uh, confusion because tied to Once and Always and Cosmic Fury, as far as like how they interact and kind of when, you know, um, as far as like whether they're connected or not in the same timeline or not, can you provide a little uh, clearing up of that clarity to that? Like, where does that timeline kind of sequentially follow? I'll do my best. 
Uh, I'm not an expert. I only play smart on television. So we're just <laughs> saying that. <laughs> just saying that up front. My my uh, experience, my understanding is that once and always happened first, and Cosmic Fury took place shortly after that. So uh, you know, I don't think there's a long period of time in between the two. But uh, you know, we ended. We heard Billy say to Min, "I'm going off to Miranoid. Did you want me to bring you a souvenir?" And so we know Billy, in theory, is leaving uh, to go into space again. And so probably within six months, maybe Cosmic Fury, all this stuff started going down. Maybe. I don't know. Awesome. I'm just hypothesizing. <laughs> hey, that sounds good to me. Uh, that's, that I, do know, right. I do know uh, as fact uh, that uh, Once and Always was first and Cosmic Fury came after Awesome. If there's any confusion uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and that helps immensely. Um, you know, you've also revealed, uh, you got fans buzzing uh, online when you revealed the first couple of scripts uh, from Quantum Continuum, uh, your, you know, created series. And, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a little bit since kind of the, it was, I th was it supposed to be eight episodes or eight scripts? And it then eight, um, eight, eight episodes. Okay. Yeah. And I so was going is there a update on that project or like when maybe fans might see more scripts? Like what's kind of the approach there? Well, the approach now is I originally was going to release all eight scripts, but um, as time has gone on uh, in talking with people, uh, they're like, you know, this is a good project. You should try to figure out how to make it just a standalone show that maybe isn't Power Rangers and um, just create a series called Quantum Continuum. So I, I have been focusing a little bit on that uh, as of late. Uh, but I did release the first three episodes, the first three scripts. I've promised I will release the fourth script, but that will probably be the last one that I will release. And it will be releasing uh, by Valentine's Day. So in the next few weeks, right. two weeks. Awesome. So, uh, and that will give people a good chunk of like the storyline as it was. But I don't want to give, as I, I've told people on some of my Instagram lives, I don't want to give it all away. Because, you know, I still want there to be elements of surprise if it does come to fruition and um, we do get to see characters that aren't Power Rangers play it out. Uh, maybe in their minds, they'll be like, oh, that would have been what Tommy, <laughs> Tommy did or something like that. So I just kind of want to um, <laughs> just kind of, you know, I'm, I've been reworking it quite a bit and um, I think it still has legs. Interestingly enough, I wouldn't have thought, but uh, it certainly would be a series where you know, you get to take some older people that were superheroes and you introduce their kids and they become the superheroes. So I think there's a lot of elements uh, uh, and great dynamics uh, with those characters of older generation. Hey, we were superheroes. Don't try to act like you know what you're doing when we know what we know how to do it. And then the new kids are always making fun of their parents like, oh, my God, you're so embarrassing. So, you know, stuff like that. And then they're really the new superheroes. So uh, it could I think it could be a lot of fun. Yeah. And anytime you play with legacy, right? Uh, it's it's always interesting. There's always so much to mine there. Also, I, as someone who, so I have a, I have a little girl uh, and she let a, uh, daddy, don't do that in front of other people slip the other day. And I like lost my mind. I was like, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for you to be embarrassed by me yet. <laughs> I know it's coming. I cannot deal with it right now. You're too young. Right. right. <laughs> it's not. It's not happening. Um, well, well, awesome, man. Uh, I, I know I got to let you go here. Um, but, you know, before we go I, with the future of the franchise, kind of, you know, kind of in limbo and open to possibilities. What do you what do you want to see uh, the franchise do moving forward? Um, whether even that's just approach. Uh, do you want it to retain some of the familiar qualities uh, that MMPR very much you know, cemented, uh, how do you, what do you want next for the franchise? For me, it kind of puts me in a quandary because uh, what I want, and I think what fans want are <laughs> diametrically opposed. So I, I was, <laughs> was pleasantly surprised uh, by how much people really loved and gravitated once and always. And they, I mean, I still get messages every day, David, please tell me there's gonna be more, there's gonna be more of those. Uh, you know, we need more specials like that. We need to see you guys back. And uh, I was like, OK, I mean, for me, I, I would like to see more adults, uh, a more adult version of 
uh, Power Rangers, however that comes about. And I, I think, I don't know, don't quote me. I don't know. I don't have the inside scoop uh, that they might be in some ways working towards that. Um, you know, uh, maybe making it more instead of like for young, young kids, like two to seven year olds, upping it up to like 13 and 17 year olds. So right. sort of like that teen genre type stuff. They might the tweens, as we used to call them. I don't know. They might be going for that. Uh, but, you know, I still would like to see something that people in their uh, 30s. I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> I have fans in their 30s and going into their <laughs> 40s, which means I'm super old. Uh, but, uh, you know, I would like to have a, a series that they could still really um, enjoy that felt more adult. So for me, once and always had almost that, but it was still young. Uh, I, I just want it to be a little bit darker. That's all. So that for me personally, but I, I have, you know, there's always talk, like a lot of fans would be like, it'd be so cool if there was an animated series of Power Rangers, uh, which I do believe it would be great if they did an animated series of Power Rangers as well as live action, like we've always done. And maybe they do three things animated, the one for young kids, and then the one for old, you know, the older people. So uh, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like uh, Power Rangers has uh, so much possibility and uh, I just hope that they really tap into it and really maybe try to really go with it. If you're really going to rebrand it and recreate it, knock it out of the park. Right. Yeah. Go all in. Um, yeah. I, I hope to see that as well. And and I think as many uh, of the franchises that are like on the wall behind me and all over the place in this office, you know, one of the things we've learned is that you can hit a multitude of genres and multitude right. of, of types of iterations of a thing and still retain that core thing. And, and it's not a bad thing. Uh, demographics big, right? So I, I hope the same, same thing. So thank you so much for, for taking the time. Uh, I really appreciate it and all the best success. I hope to, uh, you know, see you on the screen again, see Billy back up in, in some form or fashion, always hoping. Well, I appreciate you too. Thank you so much for your time.